thanks for the introduction and uh, I'm, I'm very honored for this opportunity to share our recent uh, papers and um, uh, some uh, recent uh, projects with you. And uh, today's topic is about uh, fast and affordable um, serving systems. And um, uh, so since uh, I guess most of the audience here have already learned many things about learning models, so I will not go through too many background details. And uh, we know that learning models are dominating many uh, applications in our daily lives today. And the fundamental uh, uh, factor in behind Lalander models are the transformer model architecture, and more specifically, uh, the attention calculation, which is the key uh, challenge in Lalander model uh, calculation. And no matter on uh, which Lalander models, we can find that there, there are some very common or very similar model architecture here is that they have a very large transformer uh, module and uh, it will repeat several times. And, and for, e for each transformer module, it uh, consists of both attention calculation and feed forward networks. So these two parts are the key challenge in larger model uh, calculation process. And um, another background uh, I would like to mention here is that uh, today's London models are usually following a uh, very similar decoding algorithms, which is called autoregressive decoding. So giving an uh, input prompt, it will generate the output tokens one by one uh, or autoregressively. And you can see that uh, all the previous generated tokens and the input prompts will be used to generate the next token or to predict the next token. Okay. so. That's all the background I want to introduce. And given the great success of language models and their widespread deployment in real world applications, and model serving is a new research direction and which aims to help people solve the deployment problem for language models in production environments. So as a middle layer, uh, it will map the gap between these language models and the underlying comp computational resources and will become more and more important. So one example here is that if you look at some recent uh, computer, uh, computer system conference, almost everyone now are, has already provided a dedicated session on learning models. Uh, so uh, another proof here is that the competition between different learning model uh, provider, providers or large companies uh, is more and more fierce. They not only consider the model output quality, such as the average score on several reasoning tasks, but also consider the inference efficiency and the cost effectiveness. For example, these three figures list some popular learning models and their rankings. As we can see, uh, the latest GPT-4 O mini has uh, achieved a very great uh, balance on both model quality and the speed and also uh, price. Okay, so uh, we previously we have a, we have launched a tutorial on SM, this year's SML, and we have summarized uh, and introduced a lot of recent techniques on learning model serving and summarized some key challenges here. Uh, I would like to uh, revisit these challenges here at the beginning and uh, uh, just uh, uh, introduce some uh, very important factors we need to consider when we are designing learning model serving systems. Uh, the first challenge here is latency and the response time. Uh, there are different, there are plot, uh, plenty of different measurements on the uh, system uh, performance of um, serving. So for, for example, uh, you can uh, just measure the time to first token, and you can also measure the time per output token. And, or you can just directly uh, measures the end-to-end -end latency of a uh, given input request by using the previous two parts. And there are also some other um, research are caring about the quality of experience in um, serving systems, especially for streaming service. With, for example, they, they may care the token delivery speed uh, during the generating process. So there are plenty of different uh, uh, different measurements and uh, it will lead to a very different system design and trade-offs. 
The second challenge here is, called, is about the memory footprint and model size. There are two key uh, parts of um, serving uh, that will consume a lot of GPU memory. One is the model parameters themselves. For example, if you want to serve uh, 170 billion GPU-3 model in half precision, you need at least 10 A140 gigabytes GPU. That's only for the model parameters. And another large part here is about the key value catch, which has been used to avoid the computation of previously generated tokens, and we can reuse their keys and values for attention computation. So for a very long input sequence, the key value catch can also be a very uh, significant factor for the memory consumption. And this figure shows some cases that if you increase the sequence length or batch size, the kernel catch will dominate the GPU memory consumption. And the third challenge here is called scalability and throughput. Um, when we serve under models on cloud or uh, uh, some uh, dedicated GPU servers, you need to consider about the overall system throughput and the scalability. So to improve the Lander model serving system throughput, there are several ways. It's not just about reducing the inference latency. It also consider some other factors such as the scheduling and the auto uh, the, the scheduling of the inference request and also the uh, auto scaling of the overall system capacity. So it's a very complicated system design which include which in what introduces several parts of the system components. And the third challenge here is about the hardware com uh, hardware acceleration. For example, there are more and more uh, consumer devices uh, and different hardware backends. How can we deploy large models on these different devices and generate high performance uh, code for this model execution, which is also an important direction. And the last point is the trade-offs between accuracy and efficiency. We know that today many people are trying to um, uh, reduce the size of learning model to help to uh, accommodate some uh, edge devices or uh, consumer level devices. But it will somehow, for example, if you are using model compression techniques, it will also affect the model performance. So when we design the ARM serving system, we need also consider the trade-offs to make sure that the uh, the system will not uh, or will slightly decrease the uh, uh, mode accuracy, but improve, improves the overall efficiency a lot. That's our target. But considering all these different uh, challenges in, of our um, service systems, uh, the conclusion is that there's no one size fits all solution. Uh, you may have different preference uh, if you consider all these different factors and that will also lead to a very diverse system design and solution, okay? Uh, so I will not go through too many details on this part and uh, you can uh, just follow this uh, tutorial and our survey paper uh, to look at more uh, uh, details about this part. And we, we have provided our, our thoughts and our experience and we summarize all these existing recent advances in this field and you can just uh, look at all these uh, uh, discussions in this paper or this tutorial. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back to our today's presentation. So in today's uh, talk, we will introduce uh, three parts. Uh, these three parts are just uh, some ret representative projects in, uh, recently from our group. Uh, the first one is called Back Infer. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe some of you has already heard about this paper before, and uh, which is about the speculative decoding uh, in LM serving system. And the second is called Spot Serve, which will tell you about how to reduce your uh, cost, monetary cost on uh, LM serving by using some spot instance on the cloud. And the third part, we'll, uh, we will introduce Mirage, which is uh, automatic GPU kernel generation compiler for LM serving. Okay, so the first part is spec infer, and um, this paper has a, 
being accepted on SBOS, uh, this year's SBOS conference. And um, now let's go to this, uh, go into these details. So at the beginning, uh, we want to show that the main performance bottleneck of existing learner model serving system comes from the incremental decoding algorithm, where each decoding staff only generate a single output token and using the input prompt and all previous generated tokens. So during each step's calculation, most operators will be the product between a small token vector and the model weight matrix. So with a such fine-grained GPU kernel execution mechanism, it's very hard to fully utilize the GPU compute resources. On the, on the other hand, the incremental decoding approach also requires to access all model parameters and the color cache to decode a single token, which makes the um, serving decoding process highly memory bounded. So this is, um, so before introducing our uh, solution, uh, there is another important ob observation worth to be mentioned here. Um, as we can see in this table, existing public land models are usually released with several variants in different scales. For example, uh, the smallest GPT-3 model can only has like wow, 125 million parameters. It shows pretty low model performance on different task generation tasks, but it can be hundreds of times faster than the largest 175 billion model. Considering these pros and cons, we would like to ask, uh, is it possible to uh, achieve the best of both small model and large model? What we want to do is to build a cheap, fast, and accurate AM serving system. So a promising alternative solution is called speculative inference or speculative decoding, which was first proposed by Google and DeepMind individually. And um, they are also called a sequence-based sequence speculative inference, which involves an additional small model as a speculator. This small, this small speculator is responsible for taking a quick guess on the next few output tokens. For example, in this case, uh, the speculator uh, has a prediction for T1, T2, and T3. The speculation can accelerate the decoding process because the uh, uh, efficiency of the small model. But we also need to guarantee that the speculation will not change the original outputs compared with incremental decoding. So. Existing approaches will, you, will use the original language model to verify the speculative token sequence and correct the run predictions. For example, in this case, we know that from the verifier, the third token is not correct. Okay, so we will uh, send back the verified results to the speculator and continue the iterative decoding process until all the output tokens are speculated and verified correctly. However, this approach is difficult to achieve uh, significant speed ups in reward applications due to several practical challenges. So there are mainly three parts. The first reason is that uh, the speculation of small model should be fast enough due to the dependency between the speculation and the verification. The speculation will block verification, so it should be finished in time. Ideally, we want a speculator with nearly zero time cost. Okay. The second challenge is how to make the verification efficient. The verification should be efficient because um, it may not be as efficient as a small model execution, but it, it cannot be worse than incremental approach. For example, if we the, verifying three tokens should be faster than three decoding steps of learning models. Otherwise, you don't need to use speculative decoding. You can just run the original incremental decoding, okay? And the third question, which is also the most important, is um, how to make the speculation accurate enough to align with the verification, which means that the speculation should be accurate and its output should align well with the language model. In the extreme case, uh, imagine that the small model always generates the wrong predictions. 
And then at, for each verification step, the original larger model can only output the next correct token, which will make the whole approach degrades to the incremental decoding method. Okay. So to address these practical challenges, we propose our system called spec infer, which is the first tree-based speculative, speculative decoding uh, system. Spec infer consists of two key techniques. The first one is uh, a learning-based speculator, and uh, which is for generate the speculative uh, speculative tokens fast and accurate. And uh, the second uh, component is called tree-based verifier, which is to verify the token's correctness efficiently. And I will go through these two parts individually. This figure shows uh, the workflow of spec infer. And the speculator will take a sequence of tokens as input. But unlike previous approaches, where the speculator output a sequence of predict tokens, here we, pr we produce a speculative token tree. Note that a sequence is also a special case of a tree, but the goal here is to maximize the overlap between the predict tokens and the land model's original output tokens. We found that a tree can work better for this goal. We propose two different methods to generate the speculative token tree. One is called merge-based token tree construction. It relies on multiple diverse small models and merge their predictions. For example, if each small model here will generate a single output token, sequence, we can merge the, these three sequences together as a tree structure. Our experiments have observed larger and larger speedups when we involve more and more small models here. Another method is called expansion-based token tree construction, uh, which used uh, with a single small model uh, together with some uh, sampling-based decoding methods, such as top k sampling to track multiple prediction branches during the small model decoding process. As we can see, if we increase the tree size by, by increasing k, top k from one to top five, which means that we will select top five candidate tokens uh, from the small model's output distribution in each step, we can achieve nearly 96% percent acceptance rate for the next token prediction, uh, which is uh, extremely high and uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, important to uh, bring actual speedups from end-to-end uh, uh, -end, uh, system uh, implementation. So the second component of spec infer is uh, verifier. Um, it will take a speculative token tree from the speculator and uh, use the original language model to verify the tokens against with the original language model output. Uh, to do so, we introduce a novel tree-based parallel decoding algorithm and an efficient kernel implementation to simultaneously verify all these tokens in this tree in a single LM decoding step. So now I will I will introduce how we are going to implement this. So to verify a tree of speculative tokens using existing solutions or infrastructure, we need to iterate through each branch of the tree and compute the attention scores independently. For example, in this case, uh, if we, we, we just reuse the sequence-based verification or decoding GPU kernel, which means that we need to launch three different GPU kernels and uh, process these three uh, sequence sequentially and let them to read the. Uh, so uh, another issue that we, we need to uh, use se separate QLU catch. And this approach uh, is inefficient because uh, it will result in GPU underutilization and uh, redundant memory overheads for this uh, color catch. 
to avoid these issues, we propose we introduce a new operator called tree attention. Tree attention takes a tree of vector tokens as input and process an output that is equivalent to running attention on each branch of this tree independently. But the tree attention kernel will calculate in a single forward pass, fusing all the computations from the branches together. So the, we implement this uh, by proposing several key optimizations. The first is we adopt a depth first search to linearize the token tree at the very beginning. And then uh, when, when we are calculating or verifying all these tokens, we introduce a topology aware Cairo mask to identify which tokens, which previous generated tokens you need to access for the current decoding token. For example, uh, in this uh, uh, circle pass, uh, we know that token 9, we will need to access uh, T2, T3, and T8 from the Cairo mask matrix. And in this way, we can just uh, run this uh, attention operator in a single forward pass and avoid any redundant computation and the memory consumption. Note that all these tokens of color cache will be stored in, in a sequential uh, GPU memory space without any redundancy. Our experiments had, uh, are using um, three public uh, uh, available data sets of prompts, uh, which has shown that our uh, system can outperform the state of the art by up to 2.3 times. In this slide, we will show three different scenarios, like a single GPU, uh, single node, multiple GPU, and multiple node, multiple GPU. And when we use more than one GPU, we use tensor parallelism within the same node and pipeline parallelism across nodes. We first benchmark some alternative solutions such as uh, VLM, uh, Hugging Face, or NVIDIA's Fast Transformer. Now it's, uh, it's called uh, Tensor TLM. Uh, we then conduct an ablation study and show that our runtime uh, is uh, uh, equivalent to or even slightly slower than the baseline. Here, our runtime is just a run spec infer, but using incremental decoding approach, okay? So, but if we turn on the sequence-based speculative decoding method, which is in the orange bar, we can immediately see a clear speed up. And when, when we enable our solution, uh, which is the tree-based speculative decoding uh, method, we can see a significantly lower latency than any of the other solutions across all scenarios. So we first released our paper in um, May 2023 and open source our code uh, as a part of uh, Flexflow. And this repo has been started uh, uh, more than 1,000 times. And the tree base, uh, what is more important is the tree base speculative decoding method was widely adopted by following up work since our initial release. So uh, if you have any interest, you can just visit this thing to see more, uh, to see our code. And now let's go to the second part of today's talk, which is uh, about spec, uh, spot serve. Uh, we are going to introduce how to uh, leverage spot instance to reduce your monetary cost for um, serving. So, yeah, uh, we know that Landry model serving is very expensive, especially for many large companies and um, service providers. One major reason behind this is about is because of the hardware resources. For example, if you build your own large model service with some open source pre-trained model like Llama, by um, but using some on-demand GPU instance from public clouds. Uh, it will actually lead to very similar economic costs as using ChatGPT. So to address this problem, an uh, alternative solution is to just use spot GPU instance on the cloud, um, which is different from the on-demand GPU instance. Modern cloud uh, usually provides spot GPU instance, which can be at most 10 times cheaper than on-demand instance. 
And uh, one report, uh, one recent report has also reported that the price of spot instances are continually are continue uh, decrease because of the uh, uh, because of there are more and more GPU resources available on the home. Uh, on the whole cloud computing market. So, but the, we know that spot instances are more affordable if we are going to run Lander models. But what the problem is that these resources might be preempted at any time. Here we show a real uh, 20 hours spot instance trees, uh, which is collected from AWS. On average, preemption will happen once every five minutes. In the worst case, it will happen every minute. So we know that Lander model serving is very sensitive to the inference latency. Any preemptions may lead to very significant effects to the uh, serving quality. So to ad address this problem, we propose our system spot serve, which is the first LM serving system built on top of spot instance that can automatically handle these instance preemptions. So to achieve this target, we propose several uh, contributions and we will introduce these details uh, later. And uh, overall, our system can achieve two times uh, monetary cost saving and preserves very similar low tail latency at the, uh, in the meanwhile. So let's move on uh, to the details. Uh, so if we want to build our um, serving system on spot instance to save money, uh, we first need to understand what are the fundamental issues when preemption happens, especially for spot, uh, especially for LM inference. So in this case, uh, we use an example here. Suppose we have four, uh, four GPU instance, and we first partition the model into two pipeline stages. And within each stage, there will be two instances working together using uh, like tensor model parallelism. Okay. And uh, the serving process start with uh, requests are zero, and after a few seconds, the first the first two instances in state zero have completed the first request, and they start to work on the new request R one. And uh, con considering the uh, pipeline dependency and the decoding process, we will continue iteratively, as shown in this figure. And suppose at a certain timestamp. The second instance is preempted. So what will happen? The first problem is the inference process of the current request R1 will be interrupted. And another issue here is called chain crashing. Because in existing LM serving systems, both the data dependencies in pipeline model parallelism and the collective communications in tensor model parallelism they do not naturally provide any fault tolerance. So any preemptions on a single instance can potentially pan all the other instances in the same inference pipeline. And their programs will be just paused until you have a new instance. The affected instances are not physically terminated, but they will stay uh, idle until new instances are allocated to establish the inference pipeline. And after the launching new instance, the system have to go through some uh, environment reinitialization, for example, reloading the model parameters from remote file storage, and then restart the interrupted inference request R1 from scratch. So um, in practice, uh, you may have multiple inference pipelines to uh, increase your overall system throughput. When preemption happens, if the overall throughput decreases us to a certain level, which is lower than the request arrival rate, then the incoming inference request will be stalled and leading to the increasing of the scheduling latency. So how to address these uh, uh, issues from this interrupted and accumulated inference request problems. The opportunity here is that modern clouds usually offer the grace peer. For example, Google will notify the users 30 seconds before the preemption happens. And in, 
AWS, the grace period is two minutes, which means that um, uh, it cannot directly solve the problem, but it provides us a chance to do something uh, proactively. We will show that by using this short time period, we can significantly reduce the preemption's effects to the inference latency. So when preemption happens, a naive approach will block all the instance and waste wasting the computing resources. So instead, we managed to change the parallel configuration to fully utilize the alive GPU resources. For example, in this case, uh, Originally, we are using a uh, pipeline degree of two and uh, tensor model parallelism degree of eight. And uh, after preemption happens, we decide to change it to a new parallel configuration uh, with three pipeline stages and a new tensor parallelism degree of four. Note that finding the right or the optimal parallel configuration is non trivial because it's related to the trade offs between inference latency and through throughputs. For example, pipeline parallelism will slightly increase the latency at least to a very high through very high throughput. On the contrary, tensor parallelism reduces the uh, latency but also involves overheads to the throughput. Uh, okay, um, here is a question why not to allocate new spot instance? Um, yeah, when preemption happens, when uh, by default, if you are using some auto scaling uh, or auto matic uh, tools provided by the cloud providers, uh, it will send the uh, instance allocation request to the cloud provider immediately. But it will not be guaranteed that you can. Uh, you can be, uh, you can, there are enough uh, uh, available GPU instance can, that can be allocated. If there are, they don't have to preempt your GPU instance, right? So th that's why um, you can see that in our previous figure, uh, we have a trace, uh, you can see that uh, it's, it's not uh, very easy to uh, keep a very stable available instance number because sometimes there are not enough GPU resources on the cloud. Okay. A quick question. Mm -hmm. Are there any limitations on the topology, network topology? Do the GPUs have to be on the same nodes or something? Um, the preemption will happen at the instance level, not at the GPU level. So if you are using um, multiple GPU instance, which means that all the GPUs on this instance will be uh, preempted. But um, in practice, um, if you uh, allocate GPU instance on like AWS or Google Cloud, you will find that it's, it's very hard to allocate multiple GPU instance especially for eight GPU instance. It's much more easier if you just allocate a single GPU instance or two GPU instance. And uh, for the network topology, um, the cloud provider view, uh, if, if you are allocating the instance at the, within the same uh, region or the same zone, the cloud provider will guarantee that uh, all the connections between any pairs of instance uh, will be the, the same. So the, the network layer is uh, totally transparent for, to the users. So for example, yeah. if let's say uh, one node with two GPUs is preempted, is mm -hmm. it possible to send a request to have two nodes with a single GPU? Yes, yes. Yeah, but yeah, in this paper, we didn't uh, um, discuss too many uh, uh, on this problem because uh, we are assuming that we are using a single configuration for the uh, instance tag. 
uh, we, we have experiments on allocating multiple GPU instance and single GPU instance, but we didn't make a mixture of these two types. But, it, it, but your suggestion is definitely the right that we can, we can, in practice, we can do this. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's also related to your uh, parallel configuration. As we uh, talked to here, um, we have different uh, trade offs for different parallelism strategies. Uh, if you are uh, breaking, uh, you, if you are replacing a two GPU instance with two single GPU instance, the the cross GPU communication bandwidth might be different. So, uh, in that case, uh, if you don't want to change your parallel configuration plan, uh, these two instances might be these two new instances might be the bottleneck of the overall system performance. Okay. So uh, here, uh, let's continue this uh, page. And here, uh, to address this very complex trade-offs between inference latency and throughput, um, we propose an adaptive optimization algorithm to find the optimal solution, uh, which is a kind of a hybrid parallelization, uh, parallelization plan uh, in response to uh, both the uh, dynamic spot instant availability and the fluctuating inference workloads. So the first, the, the following question is, um, since we know the optimal parallel configuration by using this, uh, by applying this algorithm, so how and when we should change this parallel configuration? So here we introduce the context migration mechanism to solve this problem. Uh, we may not want to, to uh, re reparalyze happens uh, after preemption because restarting the whole cluster can be uh, very time consuming. So what we do here is that we would like to optimistically reuse some existing GPU memory contacts rather than just destroying them. And uh, here the context in, uh, contains both the model parameters and the, the color cache which are in the GPU memory. So in particular, we want to migrate this contact information among these GPUs to finish the reparallelization process before preemption really happens. And um, considering the model is partitioned among GPUs, how to decide the migration plan is also a problem. Although we get the new configuration, but for each instance, we still don't know which topology position in the new parallel configuration will it will be its migration target. Here we, intro, uh, we introduce a, a graph matching algorithm to uh, achieve efficient configuration transformation. For example, uh, uh, the, the, key, uh, the key idea is to formulate the mapping relationship as a bigraph and the migration costs are the ways of the edges between original precision and the target precision on the parallelization topology. And we can apply the, the KM algorithm to figure out the optimal migration plan with the minimum migration overheads. And another advantage of content migration is that we can easily resume the interrupted request from the migrated color cache. And uh, uh, as shown in this figure, we don't have to we rerun request R2 uh, after migration. We can just continue uh, its decoding steps by reusing previous color catch after migration happens. Okay. So combining all these techniques, we build the world first um, serving system on spot instance, and uh, we evaluate our system on real traces collected from AWS spot instance. And uh, we, uh, uh, we are also considering that sometimes it's very hard for you to allocate uh, uh, spot instance from the cloud because uh, they, they may don't have enough resources, but it might be much easier if you just allocate on demand instance at that time. So uh, we build another two, uh, traces here uh, on top of our spot instance trace. 
which means that once preemption happens, we will try to allocate on-demand instance to maintain the same, uh, to maintain a much more stable instance availability. Uh, but since uh, the initialization of on-demand instance may also take some time, so we can see that the overall uh, instance availability may still have some uh, dynamic uh, parts, but yeah, it's it's much more better than the uh, uh, in spot instance only cases. Okay. And um, since we are the first system uh, to for, to run land models on spot instance, we build uh, two baselines by ourselves. One is just do this reparallelization without reusing any GPU context, which means that we just reinitialize all instances with a new parallel configuration from scratch. So you just reload the model parameters from the remote storage and rerun the interrupted requests. And another baseline is called uh, rerouting, which means that it for the interrupted infer, uh, uh, GPU instance, uh, we just wait until a new instance to launch. And for the rest, uh, for the interrupted request, we will result this request to other alive instance uh, inference pipelines to continue the inference process. It will lead to some uh, scheduling overheads and it also re uh, leads to uh, uh, less available GPU resources, but it's a very uh, representative solution in spot instance computing for traditional uh, computing tasks in computer science. Okay. And um, for the workload, we have uh, evaluated both uh, uh, static arrow rate and a dynamic arrow rate, which is from Microsoft Azure trees. And the first figure show on the left part shows that spot, spot serve can reduce the P99 tail latency by up to 9.1 times versus the baseline methods. And uh, another figure shows the trade-offs between the inference latency and the economic cost for different systems and different traces. The most important finding is that uh, by using a small serve, uh, you can actually save half of your money spent on GPUs that achieves very similar latency uh, in average. Okay. Um, since now we are already uh, 45 minutes and um, I, I have a still uh, I still have another part but before going to this part uh, I would like to see if you have any questions for the first two parts and uh, uh, so I can I can adjust the time spent on the third part based on our QA. Yeah if no more I can just uh, continue the last part. Okay. Um, so previously we have uh, talked to about two papers which are uh, most about, uh, oh, the first part is, the first part is back infer, which is more related to the uh, system design, the overall system design and algorithm design. But the second part is more about the distributed LM serving. And the third part is, uh, more about the uh, GPU kernel optimization of M serving. So today's machine uh, language models uh, are uh, are the serving of these models are using uh, GPU clusters, and um, and this figure shows the hardware hierarchy of existing GPU clusters. For example, it may uh, include uh, 100 GPUs connected by MA link and high performance networks. And each GPU may have uh, 100 streaming process, streaming multiprocessors, uh, which are the, the basic compute cores on modern GPUs. And uh, to improve the GPU efficiency and performance, uh, the streaming multiprocessors are becoming increasingly complicated and heterogeneous. For example, with tensor cores introduced in V100 and sparse tensor cores in A100 and some more advanced uh, features like thread block cluster and the tensor memory accelerator in H100. So uh, we will use uh, 
uh, group query attention as a motivating example to introduce this uh, our work mirage. We know that uh, group query attention has been widely used recently to reduce the code cache uh, by allowing each key value head to be shared across multiple query heads. Well, group query attention can be expressed in a few lines of PyTorch code. Directly running the program in PyTorch will result in separate kernels for executing uh, MathMoss and SoftMax. And this approach will achieve suboptimal performance due to missing uh, many advanced GPU optimization like uh, kernel fusion, uh, algebraic transformation, and reusing shared memory and or tensor memory acceleration. So to enable some uh, more optimized attention kernels, existing systems will rely on users to manually implement GPU optimizations in C++ or Python. And enable GPU optimizations will introduce many thousands of lines code uh, in CUDA or hundreds of lines code in Python. In, for example, if you are using OpenAI's Triton programming language. This slide shows a code snippet for implementing flash attention in Triton, which appears to be non-trivial for machine learning engineers with limited GPU expertise. Uh, specifically, we observe that uh, existing uh, CUDA or Triton approach will introduce two limitations. First, it requires manually design implementation the GPU automations at the kernel, thread block, and thread levels, which turns out to be too hard for non-GPU experts. And second, implementing this the implemented program may only work for standard attention kernels. And it's very hard to extend or generalize this kernel to some emerging attention variants, such as sparse attention, latent attention, and others. So recently, we have proposed Mirage, which is a super optimizer for uh, Lander models. The key idea behind Mirage is to automatically generate high-performance GPU kernels without relying on GPU experts to manually design and craft potential optimizations. Mirage offers three key advantages over existing machine learning compilers. First, it requires uh, significantly less engineering effort. To optimize the attention computation, you only need to write a few lines of Python code to describe the desired attention computation logic instead of writing 7,000 lines of CUDA or 700 lines of Triton. And Mirage will automatically generate highly optimized GPU kernels for the desired computation. The second point is Mirage can also realize better performance. It will outperform existing systems such as Triton and even human expert designed uh, attention kernel like flash attention by up to three times on specific attention kernels. And the third part is Mirage that doesn't rely on manual implementation and it offers state zero support for new machine learning models. The key uh, uh, idea, the key uh, Com uh, abstraction in Mirage is called Mugra. Uh, I will not go through too many details due to the time limitation, uh, but I will just want to uh, introduce some very high level ideas here. Is that Mugra will describe some potential optimizations at different levels of the GPU hierarchy. In particular, each Mugra has a single GPU, uh, has a single kernel graph that describes the computation at the kernel level, and each vertex represents a GPU kernel running on all streaming processors of a GPU. And for example, each vertex can represent a standard tensor algebra kernel like MathMall and are reduced, supported by uh, vendor libraries like QDNN and uh, Nico. Alternatively, a vertex can also represent a customized kernel, uh, which computation is defined by a thread block graph. And each thread block graph will describe the computation of a thread block running on a single streaming multiprocessor. All the intermediate results in a thread block are saved in the GPU shared memory to maximize, uh, to maximally enable the shared memory reuse and minimize 
the data transfer overheads. And similar to the kernel graphs, the vertex on uh, in a thread, thread block graph reference computation with a thread block. And this vertex can be standard latency algebra operator uh, spotted by uh, some libraries like Cutlass or customized operators. And its definition is captured by a lower level graph, which is called thread graph in this case. So this overall, this multi-level graph implementation allows Mirage to discover both algebraic and schedule optimizations at the kernel thread block and thread levels and by leveraging the GPU compute hierarchy. And um, existing highly optimized GPU kernels are just some specific mu graphs representation in Mirage. Okay, so um, I will skip some uh, slides to uh, save some time and uh, we can see uh, uh, the, the final results. And more details you can find about the techniques uh, in Mirage, we, you can find them in our paper, okay? Uh, we have compared with uh, Mirage with some existing machine learning compilers and some handwritten kernels for a variety of workloads, uh, like um, multi-head attention, group carrier attention, and uh, uh, multi-carrier attention. And uh, these are some very commonly used attention variants in today's language models. And we also introduce, uh, we also compare, uh, uh, evaluate the incremental decoding, speculative decoding, and the prefilling, uh, which are three representative workloads in our survey. And this figure compares Mirage with uh, flash attention, uh, tensor TLM, and PyTorch, and Triton on NVIDIA's A100 GPUs. The takeaway is that Mirage can consistently discover more optimized kernels than existing compilers and hand-optimized kernels, resulting in uh, up to 3.5 times speed up. Um, okay, um, I think uh, we can stop here. In today's talk, uh, we introduced uh, uh, three uh, representative research of our past uh, projects, uh, including Spec Infer, uh, SpotServe, and Mirage. And uh, uh, so before the ending, I would like to acknowledge my, uh, many of my colleagues from uh, CMU Catalyst. And we, we are, there are also many other student from, students from the other institutions. And um, we are actively looking for uh, prospective students uh, uh, who are interested in uh, making our survey more efficient. So welcome to join us if you have any interest. Uh, so that's all for my today's talk. Thanks for, for your listening. Questions from the audience? I have some questions. Okay. About spec infer, if you have insights regarding the tree shape, I know there are some works uh, following works trying to optimize its shape. So, yeah. from your experience. Um. Yeah. This is a very good question. Actually, um, after um our paper release, uh, there are many people are exploring this direction of speculative coding. Is different uh, aspects. And um, the tree shape is uh, definitely a very important part because um, today's um, speculative decoding approach uh, can bring uh, some extra speed ups only if uh, it, it, these three key uh, problems are addressed. The first is uh, the speculation should be efficient. The second is uh, the verification should also be efficient. And the third point is both the speculation, the speculator uh, and the language model are aligned well. So uh, that means that uh, we can only allow a very small uh, speculation budget for the small models execution. That means the tree size, uh, the maximum tree size will be uh, 
um, a constant value giving uh, the, the laundry model and the target hardware. So um, ideally, we want to find a tree structure which can maximize the uh, speculation, uh, speculative tokens, uh, the speculation of these tokens. Okay, so uh, I know that some recent papers are trying to calculate the uh, accumulated uh, probability distribution of all these nodes in this tree structure. And somehow we can, by, by using this probabilities distribution, we can uh, find a sub tree structure and which can maximize the, the overall uh, prediction accuracy. But it's necessary to know that even though you can maximize the speculation accuracy, it doesn't mean that you can uh, directly transfer it to a maximum end-to-end -end speed up. Because sometimes even um, your speculation accuracy is high. There are some other issues that prevents you from bringing actual speed up. For example, uh, verifying can be time consuming, as we met, as we discussed before. Uh, even though you can you can just uh, enumerate a very large uh, parallel tree structure, verification can also makes the overall performance lower than your expectation. Yeah, so I think the answer for this question is that it's very easy to define an optimal tree structure, but the uh, true challenge here is that how can you know that it's the correct or it's the optimal tree structure? Yeah. Okay, so next question. Um, oh, we, um, yeah, we, we are planning to update this uh, survey paper, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it will take some time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one quick question about the stack infer compared to Medusa. Oh, yeah, Medusa comes out later and they are also mentioning our paper in their uh, blog and uh, i don't know why they didn't compare uh, but uh, we are trying to uh, reproduce uh, uh, modusa's results in our some uh, recent project um, but i'm not sure if uh, it's still necessary to make these comparisons because i i feel like we are focusing on different uh, directions uh, uh, we, we have different uh, targets. For example, in spec infer, we are the first to propose uh, this tree attention and this tree spec coding. And Modusa will try to change the speculation method uh, by using other types of uh, 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 speculation method. And uh, similarly, you can find some alternative solution in, for example, in look ahead or in Eagle. Uh, you can use uh, some non autoregress decoding method as a speculator. Or you can just uh, use uh, some uh, uh, a, a, a few layers or using early exiting uh, as a speculator. So there are too many ways to uh, to have a better speculation uh, results. But I think that 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 direction is uh, orthogonal to our proposal here. Uh, what we want to say is that no matter on which speculator or which small model you are using. Um, uh, the the key uh, acceleration or the key speed ups should come from the tree speculative approach. Okay. Um, for Mirage, can it work with Triton or it's um, um yeah, uh, that's a great question. Here, um, um, currently Mirage can work with Triton because uh we can support uh to generate the code because every compiler has a, a backend that can be used to uh, generate the final code. Uh, if the users want to write the code with Triton, we can provide the Triton as a, a code chain uh, at the backend. But uh, we encourage people to use uh, uh, 
other uh, like the CUDA level coaching, which can bring better performance. And uh, yeah. And um, yeah, one, one thing to uh, mention here is that um, actually since uh, both Triton and uh, Mirage are uh, providing a uh, programming interface at the Python level. So, which means that uh, we are expecting users to directly use Mirage without uh, any efforts to learn uh, Triton, okay? Okay, thanks for asking. About the EGET, it's a different architecture and require training. So it's very different in a sense. If you want yeah, to yeah, have yeah. EGET, you need like a new model or more training. But I wanted to ask about the key difference in the approach from, let's say, a PyTorch compiler. Uh -huh. You mean the difference between Mirage and PyTorch compiler? Yeah. Do you mean the, the method we are using or? Yes. Ah. Um, um, so previous machine learning compiler are generating uh, these uh, kernels by using some existing uh, Blender libraries like Cutlass or QDN. And they are also, uh, and, and their performance are much better than uh, just directly generating this this um, attention kernels without reusing these uh, vendor libraries. So fun fundamentally, uh, in Mirage, what we want to achieve is that whether or uh, generated perf kernel performance can outperform some uh, human experts uh, written kernels like dash attention. So what the opportunity here is that actually if you run existing machine learning compilers or if you just directly write these GPU kernels by yourself, you are easily to miss many uh, kernel optimization opportunities at different levels. For example, uh, wh whether you can reuse this shared memory across uh, different operators in this computation graph. And uh, similarly, uh, there are also other types of advanced features in uh, more advanced GPUs like sparse tensor cores or th thread block cluster or the tensor memory accelerator. So it's very hard for existing uh, uh, operator level optimization uh, compilers to utilize this, uh, to, to fully utilize these opportunities. But in Mirage, by using this mu graph abstraction, we can not only, we, we can both uh, generates uh, very efficient uh, operator level kernels. And we can even do some graph level optimizations, which is um, uh, overlooked by previous approach. Okay. And um, if you go through some details of our paper, you can find that the way we explore uh, this uh, uh, GPU hierarchy or this multi level mu graph. It's also very interesting. Uh, we propose some uh, random tests to verify uh, the 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 gener the enumerated uh, graph representation of this uh, program, and um, uh, th this searching process is very also very interesting. And the overall approach will help to find some uh, GPU kernels that. Uh, can outperform flash attention because, uh, for example, in uh, I can find that slide here. Uh, we we have a case study on uh, Laura. Uh, we can find that or the generated kernel, uh, is um uh, had has uh, three metrics uh, multiplication and uh, atom wise addition, and this mu graph will fuse these three. Uh, Matmos and addition into a single GPU kernel. And uh, it will uh, perform uh, two Matmos at the thread block level to more efficiently use tensor cores on G modern GPUs. But this GPU kernel cannot be generated by existing machine learning compilers. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm hoping this can address your questions. Okay. Thanks.